discipline, meaning things that are basic to what you go through for being a Christian and you're quitting being then. a Christian. How are you going to even okay. be able to enjoy? How are you going to be able to contend with the horsemen? Meaning the things that we'll see in a time of tribulation. How are we going to be able to hold on to our faith when when the testing of our faith could be physical? Amen. And uh, we left off in the book of Revelations, looking at those seals that that um, started out with Daniel. Remember, he told Daniel, I want you to seal these things in the book. And so we started out in Revelations where we were opening up some of these seals and as y'all know, it's prophetic. It's talking about the red horse, the black horse, the white horse. And, uh, you know, we're not stressing out over understanding all of those different things. We're just trying to take what we can from it. Amen? That's fine. I don't care about it. Um, so, y'all, let's go over to Revelations chapter 6. And we're going to pick back up at that. I think we left off at the fifth seat. We started the sixth seal, but I want to pick back up at the fifth seal that was open. Now, before I begin, who remembers who was the only one that was able to open up these seals? Anybody remember who was the only one that was able to open up this seal book? Jesus. Jesus. Very good, Brother Johnny. Okay, so let's pick up uh, at verse number nine through verse number 11. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the, the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should as rest for a, for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal and lo, there was a great earthquake and the sun became black. As well, sackcloth on, brother, let, let, let's stop at 11 for just a second. Thanks a bunch. Yes, sir. Thanks a bunch. Uh, let's, let's deal with verses nine through 11 real quick, y'all. That's kind of where we left off. Um, so let's notice. There you go, Mama. It says, when he had opened the fifth seal, now y'all got to use your imagination because remember, John is telling us a vision he saw. He saw he saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. These are the people, y'all, that were basically killed for standing on God's word. Amen? Oh. Okay. Let me, let me mute Brandon, y'all. He's just getting out of his church. You know, he preached too. Now, so watch this. So, um, he says in verse 10, he said, and they cried with a loud voice saying to the Lord, he said, Lord, how long, O holy and true one, do as you not judge and avenge our blood on them that are on the earth. How long, Lord, is it going to be before you get these people back that shed our blood? Verse 11 says, and white robes were given unto every one of these people. Now, where are they at? Where is John seeing this vision at? In heaven, right? And he said, and white robes was given to them, and it was said unto them that they should rest, what? A little season. They should rest un until their what? Fellow servants also, and what? Their brethren that should be killed how? As they were and should be fulfilled. Wait a minute, y'all. This is the horseman stuff we was talking about. This is what I was stressing to us, brothers and sisters. Um, I, I want to slow down right here because... You know, I know I'm repeating myself like a broken record, but if it take that for you to really for it to sink in. God is saying it's coming a time. Not only do we not do we have to have enough faith to have some self-control. But self-control even to the point of death. Amen. 
I know you, brother Brandon, before the Lord, you had some stuff you would have died for. Amen. Amen. You weren't scared. And and well, and watch this. And that's probably why God chose you because he said, if I can win somebody like Brandon that would die for that, he got it in him to die for me too. Amen. Amen, brother. Amen. And so y'all. I want y'all to know that it's coming a time it's going to get that bad. Now, the I, I, reason why I'm stressing this because I got a video I'm going to show y'all in just a minute. But I want to just go back up to verse 9 and what it said. He said, I saw under the souls of them, them that were what? Killed for the word of God and for the what? Testimony which they hear. Let's go over here. Let's go back in our Bible, y'all, real quick. Let me see where I write it down. Right here. Let's go over to 2 Thessalonians, chapter 1. Let me see, am I going too soon? The data of the lotion in all the way. Let me see. Let's go to John 16. John 16, verse number 1. Brother Ben, we're going to read like verses uh, 1 through 4, if you don't mind. Listen to this, y'all. Remember, some people that's got to be killed for the word of God. Amen. These Go ahead, brother. When you read it. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Okay. These things have I spoken unto you, that ye should not be offended. They shall put they shall put you out of the synagogues. Yeah, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he does good uh God service. Mm -hmm. And these things will they do unto you, because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things have I told you, that when the time shall come, ye may remember that I told you of them. And these things I said not unto you at the beginning, because I was with you. All right, y'all, listen, this is Jesus talking himself. Ain't it a blessing when you got somebody to, what they say, put you up on game or tell you what's coming? Y'all, this is Jesus trying to give us an advantage to be prepared. Listen to what he says. He says, these things I have spoken unto you that you should not be what? Offended. Don't be tripping because this is happening to you. What's that, Lord? He said, they shall put you out of where? Synagogue. What's another word for synagogues, y'all? Church. Churches. They're going to put you out of churches. He says, yes, the time is coming that whosoever killeth you will think that they are doing what? God mm -hmm. a service. I'm stressing this right now, y'all, because it's got a lot to do with the video I'm about to share with y'all. It says, and these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things I have told you that when the time shall come, you will remember that what? I, I told you this was going to happen. Oh, this blesses me right now. When it happened, I wanted to come to your mind. He told me they was going to do this. How I many of you are starting to see things happening that God told us was going to happen? Amen. You know what's scary, y'all? You have a lot of people that have never started to study God's word and things are happening in front of them. That's a sign of the time we're living in. They don't know it because they haven't spent any time in God's word. No, for sure. Amen. The signs that God give us to be prepared, a lot of people don't know. It. Pastor. Yes, sir. Can I say, man, I marvel at how God is like mapping this thing out that we call life. And then he it's like, man, if you can't see it, like what he wrote then and what we living on now, because don't get it twisted away. Like, what they went through it and what we saying, what he saying we're going, what we might go, what we're going to go through, right? <clears throat> it's already happened. You know what I'm saying? Don't, like you hear what happened to the apostles. You hear what happened to the, the prophets. Mm -hmm. Like, so these things that are to come is something that's not like, oh, this is not something that we can grow, go through. You know what I'm saying? Because it was like, even how you saying, like, even the stuff that I was saying, man, I died for was so minute. And then, like, I didn't 
get a chance to experience it. But I see how some young brothers have died from the same thing that I was standing on. And it's yeah. like, man, that was so weak. That's yeah. nothing. I don't yeah. get, I don't, man, he don't, his mom and them don't get no glory from him dying for no little paper. Yes. You know what I'm saying? But the the glory, just even just seeing how God is ma mapping this thing out, it's like, man, I would get a reward for that. So this, yeah. I'll die for. Like, i stay where I'm at. Yes, man. Like, killing my flesh on not want to go to the club and, you know, holler at whatever chick I want to or, you know, go, uh, you know, going out and doing what I want to do, smoking, drink, whatever. Like, that's part of you know me taking like, taking the thought in, into realization and saying, hey, man, you might you might get that, you know what I'm saying? Because he said, you know, sometimes I do think like, man, because the words say we scarcely make it. Mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And so it's just a lot I be thinking about, man, just knowing how God put this word you know what I'm saying, in front of us to let us know, like, man, it's it's possible. Don't yeah. get it twisted. Because you said, like, I think about Peter, like how you, was, you know what I'm saying, I, I kind of, like, put myself in this thing, like, man, I had that attitude. You know what I'm saying? Yes, like, like, yeah. like, man, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta stay, I, I, I kind of still be having that attitude. You know what I'm saying? Stand at that front door. Man, you come to the door, boy, Lord. Lord, please don't yes. put no jokers to come with no, with no ignorance. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. But, yeah. uh, man, I just glory and marvel at God how how this word is just so, like, uh, in front of you. You know what I mean? Brandon, these words are over 2,000 years old, man. Yes. Like it's not like it's not written that old, that long ago. Boy. <laughs> but I look at, he wrote down words that are true 2,000 years later. As much technology and as much as this world has changed, how can this word still be true? Ain't no way they could have known unless the Holy Spirit was giving it to them. Thanks. Amen. Amen. So, go ahead, Brother Johnny, and then we're going to pick up at verse. I want you to read verse 11 again, Brother uh, Ben. Yes, sir. <laughs> I got a I got a partner I went to it was a partner I went to school with. I I got some people that done died that I done went to school with that done died now. Yes, sir. But it was this one I was reading this cat, uh this dude obituary that died a couple years ago. And I went to school with middle school with, watched him how he his life and everything, how he turned out. Came a gangster and all that with all that. But I read on his obituary, he has laid to rest until the redeemer comes. And yeah. I was and it and it shook me. I, I read it a lot different than what I read it at first. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or I, when I recognized the life he lived, damn, I said, this man never really got to know Christ. Lord, yeah. if I would have just kept up acting, acting up out here, I would have been in the ground too. Never Not knowing the Lord. Hey, Amen, Brother John. I'm glad you said that because that's perfect for what we're about to read right now. See, this is the thing, y'all. Many are dying. <laughs> but few are dying in the Lord. We claim it to be in the Lord, but what testimony do we have to say that we was in the Lord? Y'all, the y'all see here in verse nine. Can y'all see that? What I'm highlighting? Mm -hmm. Y'all see what word I highlighted? Test. Mm -hmm. What test have you gone through? while holding on to the word God has given you. Uh -huh. That's how you get your testimony. Many people have the word, but don't pass the test. <laughs> Many people have not been offended because they hold on to the word. Most of us, you know, you have to get stronger. Most times when you first get started, you go back for what you know because you get offended by trying to stand on the word. But as, as you grow, you start becoming accustomed to people coming at you or things happening to you on behalf of God. You start to understand this is just the way it is. But what God is saying to us now during the time of horsemen, y'all, it's coming a time that not only are they going to come at you for my name's sake, they're going to be so mad as to want to kill you. Mm. Some of you are going to be killed. That's why I want y'all to know, y'all, listen to me. If you get to go to sleep 
because of what they call natural causes. That would be car wreck, cancer, heart attack, old age, gunshot, plane crash. Uh, I know these things sound horrible, but those are natural. That plane crash, though. All of them rough. Hey, listen, I, I can't think of a death that's great unless you're ready to go. Going to yeah. sleep, probably. That's about probably the best one. He, listen, going to sleep, waking up to a nightmare ain't a good sleep. Well, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, y'all, don't we always say R.I.? Don't we always say R.I.P.? Yeah, yeah. Y'all know, know what, what R.I.P. Mean means? <laughs> it means rest in what? Peace. Peace. How are you going to rest in peace when you didn't die in peace with God? Mm. Come on. Come on. We don't say rest in peace for to me. Don't nobody bother you. Let you sleep. Rest in peace is an acronym to this person died at peace with God. But if you die as an enemy of God, you're not going to rest in You're going to wake up with a problem. Hmm. So watch this, y'all, because we got to move. When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were killed for the word of God, for the testimony that they had. They asked the Lord, how long, Lord, before you're going to give us revenge? <laughs> Verse 11 says, white rose was given unto every one of them that they should rest for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed with them as were, as they were should be fulfilled. So, Brother Ben, now watch this, y'all. So now we're going over into the sixth seal. Remember, it's seven seals. We in the sixth seal now. So we see in the fifth seal, some more people got to die. Amen? Watch what happens in the sixth seal. A lot of this is going to sound familiar to a lot of you. Come on. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal. And lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it was rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. As the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bond man, and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. And said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? All right. I got a little ahead of myself. I need to go back. But a lot of y'all already know what that was we were just saw, just seeing when it said hide us from the face of who? From the, from the wrath of who? The Lamb, right? Who is the Lamb, y'all? Jesus. What does wrath mean? Destruction. Anger, anger upset, mad. I thought Jesus didn't get mad. What happened to the love? Mm -hmm. no, no, no y'all, it can't be. You know, Jesus love everybody. It can't Jesus don't get mad. Well, I heard I heard somebody say, uh, when your mama whoop you, hey, uh, and that she, uh, what did it say? Is somebody, if your mama whoop you, is cause, well, you know how the Lord say, uh, if if he don't love you, he don't chastise you. And it was hey. a saying, if your your parents don't whoop you, they don't love you. That's but right. that whooping don't, that whooping don't never feel good. Amen. So y'all got this quick video I want to show y'all real quick. Let me put this back on your mind. We just read in John 16, what? That they were going to kill you thinking they doing God a favor, right? <laughs> So they're going to take you before churches. So y'all, there was something that happened recently. Oh, uh, no. There was something that happened recently. Some of y'all may have heard of some of the schism that has been going on with T.D. Jake's name here lately. Don't know if it's true or not, but they sure been running it through the ringer. You know, they, they've accused T.D. T.D. took the picture. T.D. went to one of uh, P. Diddy. Uh, Sean Puffy Cone's parties. That's not a secret. He went. Mm -hmm. Now they say, 
they say that uh P Diddy is wild, y'all. They see they say P Diddy have really wild parties, anything goes. He go both ways and you know, I a lot of schism. Well, some of you know who Geno Jennings is, some of you don't. I'm not necessarily telling you to go research him, but I will tell you this about it. He don't bite his tongue and he don't try to be nobody's friend. Mm -hmm. Amen. I, Amen. I'm I'm not necessarily a supporter of him. I think that uh, you know, me personally, I can't argue that he tell the truth about a lot of stuff, but I I don't like the way that he uh, that his approach is offensive, like like he's trying to start something, but he does speak truth in a lot of things. Anyway, it's no secret that that he calls out T D Jakes, Creflo Dollar, uh um Joel Osteen. Um, you know. he got other names that he Whatever. But anyways, what I do want y'all to know is this is something that happened. He got a letter from the Potter's House, T.D. Jake's church, asking to come for, for Gino to come to sit before the board. And he, he always reads the letters to his church that he gets from outside people, whether criticizing or not. And um, he told his church, he said, I'm not sure if I'm going to go or not. He said, no, nah, you know what, y'all, I'm going. He said, I'm not going to miss this opportunity. He said, because we're going to open this Bible. And um, he called T.D. Jakes out because T.D. Jakes had went on the C, what is the TBN channel? Mm -hmm. He tried to get the truth of God kicked out. Yeah, they, he asked, they, they asked T.D. what was his take on homosexuality. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically, T.D., he danced around the question and he said that, he, he said that, that they should choose a church that is okay with it. He said, but he thinks his room in the church for everybody. Uh, it was a it was a very calculated answer, I say this. Uh, and he called him out on it because he said he wanna stand on the word. So they called this meeting and Gino went to the meeting and this is what happened at the meeting, y'all. He's thinking they gonna sit down in the word and this is Gino, this is what happened at the meeting. Can y'all see the video, by the way? Mm -hmm. Okay. T.D. Jakes and the FBI is now targeting Geno Jennings after preaching boldly against his relationship with P. Diddy and his unwillingness to preach the truth about homosexuality. Jennings revealed that after engaging in a lengthy conversation with the Black Caucus group of ministers, it became apparent that T.D. Jakes had taken drastic measures. The Potter House, T.D. Jakes Church, targeted the truth of God. He learned to contact his lawyer to connect with him to contact the FCC, the bank million of airways, and to sue those who speaking about him on social media. They want me to stop speaking against homosexuality. If you're the FBI, if you think by any means that we are deterred, T.D. Jakes and the... So, basically, he was threatened to be sued for telling another man of God, hey, we have to take a stand. Now, I know we're going to have a lot of different opinions on that. But from my opinion, that's not hard. It's hard to do, but whether or not we should take a stance on what God's word is plain about. As y'all remember in Romans chapter one, God said that when we act like we don't know the truth and we and we refuse to acknowledge him as God, did God not say he give us over to those things? Amen. And I just want y'all to see what I see coming to pass is this man being brought before the synagogues was standing on the word. Crazy. Over something that shouldn't even be a, a topic. Remember, we remember how God felt about Luke? See y'all, that's why I'm slowing down because how the devil is playing us is because too many people think lukewarm is okay. Hmm. See, Amen. He, he didn't say nothing wrong. He didn't say anything offensive. But when you look at the question, 
All it should have been said is what God said about it. Not Amen. what you think. It don't matter what the sin, God call it, we all sin, but God, listen, Revelation 1 said the overcomers, those that overcome sin. We can't live in sin, y'all. So with that being said, we go on back to Revelations chapter 6, picking up where Brother Ben just read. Let's check this out, y'all. He said, and I beheld when he opened the sixth seal, right? There was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth. Now, y'all be careful who you think these stars are, because you would think that that was the devil's stars. I'm going to tell you how you know it's not. A, as a fig tree cast her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind, and the what? Heaven departed as a what? Whoa. Whoa. Right. When it is rolled together and every mountain and island was moved out of their places and the kings of the earth and the great men, these are the rulers of the earth. These are the presidents, the ambassadors. You know, these are the people that run the world, the rich men, the chief captains, the mighty men, every bond man, every free man. They hid themselves in deeds and in rocks and of the mountains. They was hiding y'all. And it says, and they said unto the mountains and rocks, fall on us. Hide us from the face of him that sits where? On the throne. On the throne. And not only from there, hide us from where? The wrath. Y'all hide us from Jesus. He is mad. <laughs> hide us from the wrath. Amen. For the great day of his wrath is come. Who gonna be able to stand? Y'all, when Jesus come to avenge those, remember he said, how long, Lord, do we have to wait for you to avenge our blood? He said, let those people that's got to be killed for my name's sake like you did die first. Let them kill them. Oh, y'all listen to me. Jesus know he gonna hurt, that we gonna, some of us gonna get hurt for him, y'all. I'm slowing down. I want you to Amen. wrap your mind on it so that you don't be offended. And not only that, I'm saying don't be offended by some of us going to listen. And y'all listen to this. As I'm saying this, it's scaring me. Because I'm saying, Lord, do I have it in me? Do I have it in me to, to, to hold on to what I know if it got that bad, Lord? Well, here's what the Lord wants us to know. The Lord is saying, boy, how you know is can you behave when you're mad? Can you be angry but don't sin? That's how you know. Boy, can you brighten your tongue when you need to? That's how you know. Can you go make peace where there is no peace? That's how you know. See, how are you running with the footman? That's mm -hmm. how you can find out how you're going to contend with the horseman. Amen. Come on, y'all. Listen to me. I'm just trying to encourage you. Let's stop quitting God in the footman's race. Amen. Come on, preacher. Amen. If you want to know what you're going to do, if it got that bad, he said, all you got to do, he says, know ye not if you reprobate or not? Do you not know if you're on the Lord's side? If you've been dying for the Lord daily, you know it. it ain't, you ain't got to ask nobody. Amen. Am I right about it, Sister Felicia? If you've been putting your life on hold for God, and you know you don't serve God by accident, it's intentional. Yes, it's no it fake. Is. You can't fake this it right here. Listen, it's done brought water to your eyes to please Him sometimes. You know it. Amen. And so now, y'all, we see Amen. that the skies are parted. So let's go back in the Bible so that we can get a little bit better picture before the sky rolled back and Jesus is coming. And imagine when that sky rolled back, y'all, and you see Jesus and all of the angels. Let's get some, some background on what's going on here. Let me see. I wrote it down. Let's go over to Mark 13. <laughs> Jemai, get this crazy dog. Take my side. You can tell sometimes the dog don't want to hear about Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So y'all come on, y'all. Uh, pick up at verse number 24 and come down to 27 first, brother, brother Ben. Sure. Hey, they said the animals waiting on the manifestation. Right. But in those days, after that after that tribulation, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon mm -hmm. shall not give her light. Sound familiar? Sun, and the stars mm -hmm. of heaven shall fall, mm -hmm. and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. Come on. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Yes, sir. And then shall the, he send his angels and shall gather together his elect from the four winds and from the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven. Stop. Y'all get this. This is what we were just reading in the sixth seal. Oh. Amen. We were just reading about this. When the sixth seal is open. Remember, right before that is the fifth seal. What happened in the fifth seal? So many of us was getting killed for the testimony. Right after the fifth seal, the sixth seal opened, and this is when the skies part. This is when Jesus is getting ready to come back to get his people. And notice what the word says in verse 24. But in those days, after that tribulation, The sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light after the tribulation. And the stars of heaven shall fall. The powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the son of man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Remember he said that the heavens were going to roll back like a scroll. Watch this. And then shall, shall he send what? His angels and shall gather together what? His elect from the four winds, y'all. That just means the four corners of the earth. From the north, the south, the east, and the west. From all over. From the uttermost parts of the earth to the other, uttermost parts of heaven. He gonna send them. Let me come down. Let's see here. Let me do this, y'all. Let me go over here. Pastor James, I have a question. Yes, sir. Does I know I know it's in the Old Testament, but I love to when when I think about the coming of the Lord, I always think about Amos uh Amos eighteen mm -hmm. when he Amen. said, "Why do you long for the coming of the Lord?" Amen. Mm -hmm. I love that. And yeah. God said, "Do you not know there's gonna be darkness when I come? Like, do y'all do y'all like? Is you really ready for that?" Does that even fall into what in here? Like, you know what I'm saying? Because God really be, because God was talking about things that was going to happen in the future way back then. Yeah. He man. was giving us. Yeah, Brother Johnny, it's so much. There's a, there's a place that he says that the people are going to be looking for the word. They're not going to be able to find it. Yes, sir. You got That's people. around there, too, in the Minor Prophets. Yeah. For right now, that's not concerned on God's word. Times are going to get so bad, they're going to be like, man, we need God. And this is when they're going to be wanting to get serious about finding God. And God said, you're not going to be able to find it. You're not going to be able to find nobody to teach you the truth. Amen. Amen. And you're going to want it. Um, Way too late. Yeah, man. And, oh, and y'all, and God don't show, God tell his children the secrets on the signs to pay attention to. Amen. So mm -hmm. come on. This is verse 24. Let me see. Let me see. Yeah, there's some people never heard it. Let's just do this. Brother Ben, come on. Read almost in Spanish, but not, not quite Spanish. You know, read it fast. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. Mm -hmm. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the household came and said unto him, Sir, didst not, not, did thou sow good seed in, that, in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? He mm -hmm. said unto them, An enemy hath done, hath done this. The servants said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather 
up the tares, yet, ye, excuse me, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together unto the harvest. And then, and in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather ye together first the, first the tares, and bind them in bundles and burn them. But gather, but gather uh, the wheat into a, into my barn. Amen. So y'all, quickly. So y'all, basically, we got a field. And he had this man that had a field, and his workers were saying, Lord, we know you planted wheat in this field. Where did all these tares in this field come from? Amen. And, oh. and, and the master says, the enemy planted these tares while people, while men were sleeping. And so they asked the master, he said, do you want us to go out into the field and take all of the tares out? He said, no, don't do that. He said, because you're going to be trying to pull up wheat and you're going to, I mean, pull up tares and you're going to accidentally pull up some of my wheat too. And so at the end of this, he says, y'all just let, verse 30 says, let them grow together until when? The harvest. The harvest. He said, and in the time of the harvest, I would say to the reapers, gather ye together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. What was it talking about? Pick up at 36, Brother Ben. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house, and his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. What he was you talking them, about? Come on. And he, he answered and said unto them, He that saw of the the good seed in the end is the son of man. Uh -huh. The field is the world. And good seed are the children of, of the kingdom. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest mm -hmm. is the end of the world. And the reapers are the, are the angels. As mm -hmm. therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be at the, in the end of this world. The son of man shall send forth his angels. And, and they shall gather out of the kingdom all things that offer. Mm -hmm. um, and them which do iniquity, uh -huh. and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of thy of their father, who have ears to hear. Let them hear. So y'all, what I want y'all to know is we are looking at the sixth seal being revealed in a more plain way. When we open it up in Revelations, it talked about the, he the, the heavens being rolled back like a scroll and the stars of heaven fell. Hide us from the wrath of the Lamb. Okay? When we looked at it over in um, another chapter, over, I think we was in uh, Mark, and it was talking about the angels coming down and stuff like that. We're still looking at that same thing. It's basically painting a picture of what this whole thing rolling out looks like. So here we are in verse 37. 36, and Jesus sent the multitude away. He went to his house and his disciples, these are the people that are sitting under his feet, his students. They say, Lord, tell us what that parable about the tares and wheat meant. In other words, they didn't get it either. He answered and said unto them, he that soweth the good seed is me. He said, the field is what? The world. Any of y'all happen to live in the world? Yeah. Amen. Watch this. Now, this is where it gets real. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. Y'all, you are either wheat or tear. Right. Let that settle in. There's no other, there's no other type of children on this earth. You either a child of God or you're a child of Satan. It's me. All right. Now, whether you believe it or not, this is what God says going to go down. He says in verse 39, the enemy that sold them is the devil. The harvest is what? The end of the world. And the reapers are the angels. Y'all, these are the stars. These are the stars that it was talking about in Revelation that came down. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be when? In the end of the world. All of the devil's kids will be gathered together to be burned at the end of the world. 
Y'all, let me tell y'all something. The wicked don't worry about their death. People don't worry about God until it's a funeral. Amen. Well, nowadays, they not. Y'all, let me tell you something. We supposed to be prepared to die. That's the only way you can die in Christ. Dying in Christ is intentional. We got to stop thinking that because the Lord love everybody, that means everybody is his child. You got to give your life to Christ. You got to do something to show that you his child. You got, listen, if you raise your kid, when your kid go out in public, they ought to show signs that they being, they getting some home training. Is that right? Yeah, well. Well, if we are the lost child, when we out in public, we ought to act like the Lord is raising us. Hmm. It ought to be in the way we talk. Not no MF or you ugly. You know, you can't be the Lord. Like that? Hey, man. Some of y'all was offended that I said that because you know ain't no preacher. I don't talk like that. But it, that's what I mean. If you're the Lord's child, you know what they sound like. How you going to be talking crazy talking about that's your father? Amen. Amen. Hey, pal. Hey, Amen. Some of us, God or no God, your kid coming in the house cussing and going on like that, you're going to put something in their mouth, ain't you? <laughs> Who are you talking to? <laughs> exactly. We, we wouldn't allow our kids to talk like that in the house. But yet, as grown <laughs> folks, so-called children of God, we say whatever we want to. Mm -hmm. Come on now, that don't make, that's against your common sense. And mm -hmm. then lack accountability. So and we and, and somebody else made you do something. And what God is saying, what type of person were you when you were on this earth? I got to move, y'all. Watch this. Watch this. It's time flying. And therefore, the tares are gathered to be burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of the world. Verse 41. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels. That's why I said those stars that was falling from heaven, those are the Lord's angels right there in Revelation 6. They shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them which do iniquity. Look who they getting first. They getting all of the people that basically didn't live for the Lord. All of the people that was living in sin. That's who they coming for. Watch this. And shall cast them into a furnace of fire and they sh there shall be what? Welling or gnashing of teeth. Verse 43. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of the Father, who has ears to hear, what? Let him Let hear. That all right? Let him hear it. Now watch this. Now guess what's got to happen first, though? Let's go over there. Let's go over there. Okay. Second Thessalonians. Chapter 2. But this is what has to happen first, y'all, before he comes. Read 1 through 4 first, Brother Ben. Look what got to happen first. These are signs. Look for it. See if you see it happening today. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man uh -huh. deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. All right, let's deal with this really fast. Now, I beseech you, brethren, and by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, watch this, that you not be soon shaken in your mind. Don't let your faith be messed up. Don't be troubled, neither by spirit nor by what? Word. Nor by letter as from us, as the day of Christ is at hand. It's close, y'all. Watch this. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come. Jesus shall not come what? Except there come a what? Falling away first. 
you're going to see people get further and further from the truth of God. He said more than anything, watch out for those false what? Prophets. These are people that will not stand on the word. Y'all, I got to tell y'all something. You can speak Jesus and not be saying anything. Watch this. I can tell you about the love of God, right? I can tell you about how he died for your sins. I can tell you about how he loved everybody. I can tell you about how he healed the sick. I can tell you about how he sat among sinners. And every bit of that is true, right? But what if I never tell you that he said, but if you love me, keep my commandments. What if that's I never that's... tell you, you are my friend, if you do what I say? You see how I told you a lot of truth about Jesus, but there's some things about Jesus that if I don't tell you as well, you're not getting the whole thing. See, there are a lot of people that feel like they have Jesus, but they don't feel the, the, the concern to actually obey him. To actually walk with him. And he does love us all. That's a fact. That's not the question. The question is, do we love him too? Because only if you love him are you going to be able to hold on even to death. Amen. Yes, sir, Brother Tom. So uh, to go back to what you said before, that so many people are, are surrounded by the love of God, but they don't see the severity of him. And that, that's why we miss it. It's all about love and he loves us through our sins, but he they forget that he is a God of, of standard. Yes, yes. So watch this, y'all. He said that man of sin has to be revealed. I showed y'all last week about how the Pope was upset. No, how the Africans were saying that we not doing that here. We not marrying same-sex couples. And they said it's okay for them because they don't believe in that by culture. What does culture have to do with that if you're a man of God and you know what God's words say? Mm -hmm. See, what I'm saying is y'all we in a time that the world is moving in a way that, listen, it's going to call you out. You're either going to be lukewarm or you're going to stand with God. But either way, the more you hold on to what God says is true, the more it's going to put you in the forefront of who they need to target. Uh-huh. And that's why I'm just pleading with y'all. I'm saying, y'all, listen, some of y'all are going to have the blessing of just, just stay in the wheel. You're going to get to go to sleep in the wheel. You ain't going to have to deal with nobody persecuting you or it getting physical in your life. You are, you are going to be allowed the blessing of going to sleep before tribulation. Take advantage of that time. God loves you. And he's saying, I'm not going to put more in you than you can bear. I know your faith couldn't take that level. So I'm going to let you go to sleep before then you take advantage of that blessing. Live what you know so that you can go to sleep during a time of peace. Because God is saying, think not that I come to bring peace, but I can bring time to bring a sword. I am going to take peace from the earth. Amen. In other words, brothers and sisters that believe in the Lord, it's going to get worse. Stop thinking the government is going to make it better. It is going to get worse, especially if you're a believer. This world going to get even more ignorant, y'all. So watch this. Pick up at verse 5, Brother Ben. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now you know what, what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his name. For the mystery of iniquity does already work. Only he who no, no letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then mm -hmm. shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan will with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish 
because they receive not the love of the truth that they mm -hmm. might be saved. Go ahead, read verse 11 through 12. And for, this, and for this cause, God shall send them strong delusions that they should believe a lie. Go ahead, verse 12 as well. They that all um, they they that that they all might be damned and who believe not the truth but have pleasure in unrighteousness. So y'all, we're gonna probably finish with this part last night. I mean tonight and on Thursday, we'll do uh the last seal, the seventh seal. But but I want y'all to get what's going on here. Oh, I'm sorry, brother Johnny, go ahead. <laughs> All I, all I was just trying to say is just going back to what you said about how uh, pastors are false prophets or how they preach today. You know, I think too many people, people are just too spoiled off, uh, you know, sugary serum and sugary, sugary church. It's just sweet to them, you know what I'm saying? Like little sweet milk. Mm -hmm. People are so mad. It's so malnutrition. Christians, which is, they just so spoiled and used to that stuff. You know what I'm saying? It just yeah. tastes good to them, but it's the same thing that's killing them. Yes. And that's the subtlety of Satan, y'all. And I'm, I'm going to tell you something. I, I can tell you, I can be afraid of y'all. I feel like y'all deserve some sweet messages sometimes. But you know, uh, but I'm going to say this. And I, I'm sure y'all all can agree with me on this. You know, uh, Ain't no couple that's in love and on cloud nine need no counseling. <laughs> hey man, am I am I right about it? Yeah, you. Yeah. They don't need they don't need no counseling until it ain't no clouds. Amen. Yeah, Amen. And so what I'm saying is, I, it's my job to give y'all word that help y'all when it's dark. It's my job. Oh, yeah, yeah, no. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead, D. I'm sorry, I'm just been thinking of the evening the sweet message. We still uh learning about the severity of God, you know. It just may be in a sweet way, you know. It ain't nothing sugar. I mean, it could be a little sugar coated, but it's 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 it brought a, it's brought across kind of smooth, but we still knowing God mean business. It's all right, D. We friends. You can go on and tell me I could be nice about it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but but really, hey, I ain't, ain't no way around the world, you know, than to know how God is, man, and how you feel about his about his kids, you know. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we watch did, we it, it says, uh, "Where are we at? Remember ye not that when I was with you, I told you these things, and now when and now you know what withhold it that He might be revealed in this time." For the mystery of iniquity is doing now already work. In other words, y'all, there's a mystery in sin. Do have y'all noticed that every generation get worse with sin? Uh -huh. Y'all, one of the toughest topics to deal with, I was talking to some people about this today, is the topic of modesty. Yep. I'm going to tell you why I say that. If you ask somebody that was born in the 40s compared to somebody born in the 60s, what's modesty? They're going to have different opinions. If you uh -huh. ask somebody in the 60s born versus born in the 70s, on modesty, a different opinion. 70s to 80s, every generation you go with modesty, the definition change, right? But watch this. Every generation, it gets further from God. Uh -huh. Every generation has gone deeper into sin than the generation before. Listen, we are living in a time it's easier to study God's word than ever. And you have less people studying it. Uh -huh. Every on. generation is worse. He says, only who, only he who now let it will let. Only the people that are allowing sin to work are the ones that's going to do it. Until what? That man be taken away. He says, and then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. He's talking about when that sky part, y'all, in the Lord's glory show. He said, that's when the, you, you can't stand in the glory of God. If you ain't right, you won't be able to look on him. His glory, man, it's it'll kill you. He said, even him who's coming Coming is after the working of Satan with all power. Listen how powerful he is. He has power 
He has the ability to do signs and he has lying wonders. See, if you don't know God, miracles will make you believe the wrong thing. I don't care what the miracle is. If it's against what God said, it ain't of God. We can't, we got to remember the devil got power too. Uh -huh. That's right. Amen. He says, and with, all know this, with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that what? Perish. What is deceivableness? Trickiness. That craftiness. That craftiness of the people that's going to die in unrighteousness. Because why? They receive not the love of the truth. They did not love God's word so that they could be saved. Y'all just learning to just like, listen, God's word is compared to food. We eat every day, don't we? Uh-huh. I don't know about y'all, y'all, but I'm on the head. I, my attitude changed when I ain't ate. <laughs> my, listen, my fasting, y'all, in order for me to stay spiritual, my fasting got to be delivered. I just can't not be eating just to miss it. Nah, I can't do it <laughs> for fun, Brandon. Now, if I know I'm fasting, I'm good. But <laughs> When don't, I get just that open, thing, don't just open talking about we fast. Huh? No, you can't do that to me, right? <laughs> but listen, we have to love the truth. We got to eat it. We got to yeah. eat this word, y'all. It ain't going to yeah. fall out of the sky. He says, watch this. For this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Because mm -hmm. they didn't learn to love what God said. Then God said, I'm going, okay, since you don't want, you don't care what I say, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to send you a trick so that you will believe the lie you would rather believe. Hmm. Oh, y'all got to get this. When God plays you, yeah. hey, I'm encouraging you to be open to what God has said. I'm encouraging you to trust God over anybody. The Bible says what? Trust God and I mean. So watch this. Send your strong delusion that you should believe a lie. That they all, why are you going to do that to us, God? That they all might be damned who did not believe the truth. I am going to give you the lie you wanted since you didn't want the truth. So that when the end comes, you're going to have to deal with me. That's cold, Jesus. Why do you say that? Because Jesus said, in the beginning was the word. And the word was what? With God. And the word was God. What am I saying? That word that you don't want is me. Of course. Why you want to come live with me when you don't want to read about me? Huh. You see the hypocrisy in that? Uh-huh. Why you want to come live with me, but I can't be a part of your debates? Why you want to come live with me when I'm not welcome in your house? Why you want to come live with me and you don't want to spend no time with me on earth? Why you want to come up here? <laughs> I don't have nothing up here that you love. Think about it. What do you spend the majority of your time doing? Nine times out of 10, we ain't doing it up here. Christ said, you ain't doing me. So what you want to come up here for? Mm -hmm. See, y'all, we got to love that word down here because it's going to be a lot of word up there. We got to love peace down here because it's going to be a lot of peace up there. So I'm going to tell you something. A lot of us like drama. Oh, I hate to say it. But some mm -hmm. people ain't no fun unless it's some mess. Every night. You want to talk for hours over mess, but you don't want to get down to no resolution. You love that drama. For sure. Boy, if, if it's some peace, you boy, and you're going to do something to mess it up. <laughs> it's peace in heaven, y'all. I don't know if that's where you want to go, because he ain't going to put up that mess up there. You're going you gonna to get kicked out. I think you almost eliminate yourself before it comes. I'm, I'm saying, man, you got to like heaven down here. What, see where your treasures are. That's what I'm saying. See, when you like heaven 
and down here, you ready to go. You ain't you ain't scared of death because you know that's your exit to heaven. Mm -hmm. Amen. Go ahead, Brother Johnny. We got to pray. What's that beautiful prayer that God had that, you know, uh, our father prayer? Now, uh -huh. in that prayer, God say, yeah, they, they say, on earth as it is in heaven. I think people uh -huh. still can quote that prayer so much but don't understand. He said, on earth as it is in heaven. If you can show uh -huh. me you love me on earth, I know you love me in heaven. Yeah. But this the yeah. very, but this the very world right here. We're gonna we're gonna kill ourselves down here because we're stopping at earth, but we don't want to get to heaven no way. We're just gonna stop right here. And it's the very thing that's gonna kill us. You love the create you love the creation more than the creator. Amen. Yeah. I know I know a lot of us wanna go. I'm just I'm just being a little hard. I know a lot of us wanna go, but I don't think that we take the time to step outside of ourselves to really pay attention to some of the things we're gonna let stop us is really small. When you got when you compare it to what we got to be up against, brothers and sisters. Um, and so on Thursday, y'all, we're gonna get into the last seal and the last trumpet. And just know that's after what we're dealing with tonight. But I, I pray we all got something. Um I didn't want to scare you, but if it if it scared you a little bit to say, man, let me stop playing and get serious, then praise the Lord. That's the goal. Amen. Uh, yeah. yeah, I don't I don't I don't want nobody to serve God out of fear. But I, I tell you what, I'd rather you be scared now than you get then it come it hits you in the face that this ain't a game. No, nah, for sure. You're sitting in a prison, sir. Amen. 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 So uh y'all let us pray. Thank y'all for joining <laughs> me tonight and uh looking forward to um seeing you guys on Thursday. And if y'all want to read ahead, we're gonna pick up with Revelation 7. Revelation 7. All right. Amen. Awesome word. Glory to God. All right, y'all. Let us bow. Excuse me. Heavenly Father, I'm going to be coming in prayer, Lord. Thank you for the opportunity to study another portion of your word. Father, we just come asking for forgiveness of our sins. And we thank you, Lord, for allowing us to just take a moment, Lord, to Sit down in your word, Lord, and learn more of you, Father. We need your spirit to be upon us, Lord, to increase our faith, Lord, and hold us on, hold on to us, Lord, in these evil days, Father. Lord, help us, Lord, to hold on to your hand, Lord, that we may all hear you say, well done, thy good and faithful servant, Lord. We want to thank you for your, your son, Jesus, Lord, who gives us the opportunity, Lord, to even be seen um, in your sight, Father. We ask all of these things, Lord, in your darling son, Jesus' name, as we all say, amen. 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 Amen.